Chapter 6. Dimitro's War. The sound of gunfire echoed through the shattered streets of Mariupol, a grim reminder of the war that had engulfed Ukraine. Dmitry Kulish crouched low behind a crumbling wall, his rifle clutched tightly in his hands, every muscle in his body tense. The air was thick with the acrid smell of smoke and the sharp tang of gunpowder mingling with the dust that coated everything in a thin grey film. He had been in the military for only a few weeks, but it felt like a lifetime. The life he had known, the peaceful days spent in his workshop, the quiet evenings with Irina, Sofia and Bodan, seemed like a distant dream, something that had happened to someone else. Now, his world was reduced to the harsh reality of war, where every day was a struggle to survive, every moment a fight to protect what little was left of his country. Dimitro's mind often drifted back to his family during the rare lulls in the fighting. He could still see the fear in Irina's eyes as they had been forced to part at the checkpoint. The way Sofia had clung to him, trying to be brave and the small, confused look on Baudin's face as he had waved goodbye. The memory of their departure was a constant ache in his chest, driving him forward, pushing him to fight, not just for his country, but for the chance to see his family again. Dimitro, over here! A voice hissed, snapping him back to the present. He turned to see Yuri, a fellow soldier, and one of the few friends he had made since joining the ranks, gesturing for him to move up. The two had quickly bonded over their shared sense of loss. Yuri's wife and daughter had been evacuated to Poland just days before Dimitro's family had fled, and the two men often spoke of their loved ones in the rare moments of quiet they found. Dimitro nodded and moved quickly keeping low as he darted across the rubble-strewn street to join Yuri behind a half-collapsed building. The enemy fire had intensified in the past few hours, and it was clear that the Russian forces were preparing for a major assault on the city. We need to hold this position until reinforcements arrive, Yuri said, his voice grim. They're trying to break through our lines. If they succeed, the entire city could fall. Dimitro's jaw tightened as he scanned the horizon, his eyes narrowing as he spotted movement in the distance. We won't let that happen, he replied, his voice resolute. We have to hold them off. We have no choice. Yuri gave him a nod of agreement, though the weariness in his eyes spoke of the toll the war was taking on all of them. Let's make sure we give them hell he said, a fierce determination in his voice that mirrored Dimitro's own. The two men settled into position, their rifles trained on the approaching enemy forces. The air was thick with tension, the silence before the storm almost unbearable. Dimitro's heart pounded in his chest, but his hands were steady, his focus sharp. He had been a carpenter, a man of peace. But war had turned him into a soldier, a soldier with something to fight for. The first shot rang out, piercing the silence like a knife. Dimitro didn't hesitate. He squeezed the trigger, the recoil of the rifle familiar now, almost second nature. The world around him exploded into chaos, the sharp staccato of gunfire mingling with the deafening roar of artillery. The ground shook beneath him as shells exploded nearby, sending plumes of dust and debris into the air. Dimitro's world narrowed to the here and now, the immediate task of holding the line, of keeping the enemy at bay. His thoughts of Irina, Sofia and Bodan were pushed to the back of his mind, replaced by the cold, hard reality of survival. Every shot he fired was a reminder of what he was fighting for. Their safety, their future. The battle raged on for what felt like hours, 
the sun sinking low in the sky, casting long shadow over the ruined city. Dimitro's arms ached from the constant firing, his throat dry and parched from the dust and smoke. But he kept going, driven by the knowledge that there was no other choice. Finally, as the last rays of daylight began to fade, the enemy forces started to retreat. The Russian soldiers, realizing they couldn't break through the Ukrainian defenses, pulled back, leaving behind a field of devastation. The ground was littered with the bodies of the fallen, both enemy and friend. A stark reminder of the cost of the conflict. Dimitro slumped against the wall, his breath coming in ragged gasps, his body exhausted, but his mind still racing. The battle had been won, but the war was far from over. Every day was a new fight, a new challenge to overcome. And there was no telling how long it would last. Yuri approached him, his face streaked with dirt and sweat, but his eyes alight with a small measure of triumph. We did it, he said, his voice rough, but filled with a grim satisfaction. We held them off. Dimitro nodded, though the victory felt hollow. The city was still standing, but at what cost? How many more battles would they have to fight before this nightmare ended? Let's check on the others, Dimitro said, pushing himself to his feet, his muscles protesting with every movement. Make sure we didn't lose too many. Yuri nodded, and together, they moved through the wreckage, checking on their comrades, offering what little comfort they could to the wounded and silently mourning the fallen. It was a grim task, but one that had become all too familiar in the days since the war began. As they worked, Dimitro couldn't help but think of his family once more. He wondered where they were, if they had made it safely to Poland if Irina had managed to keep Sofia and Bowden safe. The thought of them out there, vulnerable and alone, gnawed at him. But he pushed the fear aside. He had to believe they were safe, that they would be reunited when this was all over. Later that night, as the soldiers gathered around a small fire, sharing what little food they had, Dimitro found himself staring into the flames, lost in thought. The exhaustion that had been kept at bay during the battle now threatened to overwhelm him, but he forced himself to stay awake, to keep watch. Yuri sat down beside him, handing him a small tin cup filled with steaming tea. Here, drink this, he said, his voice quiet. It's not much, but it'll help. Dmitro accepted the cup with a nod of thanks, sipping the hot liquid slowly, savouring the warmth as it spread through his body. The fire crackled softly, the only sound in the otherwise silent night, a brief moment of peace in a world torn apart by war. They'll be safe, Yuri said suddenly, as if reading Dmitro's thoughts. Your family... They'll make it to Poland, and they'll be waiting for you when this is all over. Dimitro glanced at him, surprised by the sudden statement, but he saw the sincerity in Yuri's eyes, the quiet confidence that only someone who had been through the same ordeal could offer. I hope so, Dimitro replied, his voice thick with emotion. I have to believe that. It's the only thing that keeps me going. Yuri nodded, taking a sip of his own tea. We'll make it through this, he said, more to himself than to Dimitro. We have to, for them. The two men sat in silence for a while longer, the fire slowly dying down to glowing embers. The night was still the only sound the distant rumble of artillery fire far to the east. Dimitro knew that tomorrow would bring more fighting, more bloodshed. But for now, in this brief moment of calm, he allowed himself to hope. 
As he lay down to rest, his thoughts drifted once more to Irina, Sofia and Bodan. He pictured them safe and sound in Poland, waiting for the day when they could be reunited. It was a fragile hope, but it was all he had, and he clung to it with all his strength. With that thought, Dimitro finally allowed himself to sleep, his dreams filled with images of his family, their faces a beacon of light in the darkness that surrounded him. No matter what the war threw at him, no matter how long it lasted, he would keep fighting, for them, for their future, and for the chance to see them again. Chapter 7 The Uncertain Future The heavy thrum of engines filled the air as the military convoy made its way down a rutted, war-torn road. Dimitro sat in the back of a battered transport truck, surrounded by a dozen other soldiers, their faces drawn and hollow with exhaustion. The battle in Mariupol had been a hard-won victory, but it had come at a steep cost. Now they were being redeployed, sent to reinforce another front where the fighting had grown fiercer by the hour. Dimitro leaned back against the cold metal of the truck, his body aching from the days of relentless combat. His thoughts drifted, as they often did, to Irina, Sofia and Bodan. He wondered where they were, if they had made it safely to Poland. The hope of reuniting with them was the only thing that kept him going, the only light in the darkness of war. The convoy rumbled on, the landscape outside, a blur of shattered buildings and blackened fields. It was a grim reminder of how much had been lost, how much more could still be taken. The thought gnawed at Dimitro, but he forced himself to focus on the task at hand. He had to survive, to keep fighting. Because giving up was not an option. The truck suddenly lurched, and Dimitro was jolted from his thoughts as the vehicle slowed to a stop. The soldiers around him tensed, their hands instinctively moving to their weapons. They had learned to be wary of every stop, every unexpected delay. Danger lurked around every corner, and they couldn't afford to be complacent. The truck's driver leaned out of the cab, shouting something to the soldiers in the back. Checkpoint ahead! Be ready! Dimitro exchanged a glance with Yuri, who was seated across from him. Yuri's face was pale, his eyes narrowed with suspicion. Another checkpoint? he muttered. Seems like we can't go five kilometers without running into one. Dimitro nodded, but said nothing. He knew that these checkpoints were necessary to keep the enemy at bay but they also brought with them the constant threat of ambushes, of snipers hiding in the ruins, waiting for the right moment to strike. The truck rolled forward solely, the sound of soldiers barking orders growing louder as they approached the checkpoint. Dimitro gripped his rifle, his senses on high alert. The tension in the air was palpable, a shared unease, that settled over the convoy like a heavy blanket. As they pulled up to the checkpoint, Dmitro caught sight of a group of Ukrainian soldiers, their uniforms dirty and torn, standing guard. Their faces were grim, their eyes hollowed by the same exhaustion that plagued Dmitro and his comrades. But there was something else there too, a look of quiet desperation that sent a chill down Dimitro's spine. The truck came to a halt, and a soldier stepped forward, his rifle slung over his shoulder. Papers! he shouted, his voice rough from shouting over the roar of engines. The men in the truck began to reach for their documents, but before anyone could respond, another soldier appeared his face set in a deep frown. He was older, his hair streaked with grey, and he wore the insignia of a higher rank. Hold on, 
the officer barked, raising a hand. Who's in charge here? The driver of the truck, a young lieutenant, leaned out of the cab. That would be me, sir, he replied, his voice steady. The officer nodded and motioned for the lieutenant to join him on the ground. The two men stepped aside, speaking in low tones their conversation too quiet for the rest of the soldiers to hear. Demetra watched them closely, his unease growing by the second. After a few minutes, the officer turned back to the truck. I need four men to stay behind and help fortify this position, he announced, his voice carrying over the noise of the convoy. The rest of you can proceed. The soldiers exchanged uneasy glances. They all knew what this meant. Those left behind would be tasked with holding the line, facing the brunt of any enemy assault that might come. It was a dangerous assignment, one that could easily become a death sentence. Demetro's heart pounded in his chest as the officer began to call out names. His mind raced, trying to anticipate what would come next. He didn't want to stay behind, not when he had a family to return to. But he also knew that refusing wasn't an option. Yuri Kozak, the officer called out, and Dimitro felt his stomach drop. Yuri's face went pale, but he gave a grim nod, his expression resolute. He turned to Dimitro, forcing a tight smile. Looks like I'm staying, he said. His voice tinged with a mix of fear and acceptance. Dimitro's heart twisted with worry for his friend. But before he could say anything, the officer's next words froze him in place. Dimitro Kulish. The name hung in the air like a death knell. Dimitro felt a wave of cold wash over him as he locked eyes with Yuri. They both knew what this meant. They were being asked to stay behind to defend a position that might not hold, to face the possibility of never seeing their loved ones again. Dimitro nodded slowly, swallowing the lump in his throat. We'll do what we have to, he said quietly, his voice firm despite the fear gnawing at his insides. Yuri clapped a hand on Dimitro's shoulder, his grip strong and reassuring. We'll get through this, he said his voice filled with the determination that Dimitro clung to like a lifeline. The officer called out the names of two more soldiers who joined Dimitro and Yuri on the ground. The rest of the men in the truck exchanged quick, solemn goodbyes, knowing that this might be the last time they saw their comrades alive. The truck rumbled back to life, the convoy slowly pulling away from the checkpoint. Dimitro watched it go, a sinking feeling settling in his gut as the dust kicked up by the departing vehicles clouded the air. The officer turned to the four men who had been left behind. We don't have much time, he said his voice brisk. We need to reinforce the barricades and prepare for the worst. The enemy is advancing, and we can't let them break through. Dimitro nodded already moving to assess the defences. The barricades were makeshift at best. Piles of rubble, overturned vehicles, anything that could be used to create a barrier between them and the approaching enemy forces. It wasn't much, but it would have to do. The next few hours were a blur of frantic activity. Dimitro, Yuri and the other soldiers worked tirelessly to fortify their position, using whatever materials they could find to strengthen the barricades. The sun was setting by the time they were finished, casting long shadows over the desolate landscape. The tension in the air was thick, the quiet before the storm. As darkness fell, Dimitro found himself standing at the edge of the barricade, his rifle slung over his shoulder as he gazed out into the distance. The horizon was quiet, but he knew that could change in an instant. 
the enemy could strike at any moment. And when they did, it would be a fight for survival. Yuri joined him, his expression serious as he surveyed the scene. You know, Dimitro, I used to dream of coming home every night to my family, he said, his voice low and filled with a sadness that made Dimitro's chest tighten. Now, I just hope I survive long enough to see them again. Dimitro nodded, understanding all too well. I know what you mean, he replied, his voice heavy with the same weight of uncertainty. Irina, Sophia, Bodan, they're all I think about, but we can't let that distract us. We have to stay focused. Yuri sighed, running a hand through his hair. You're right. We'll fight. And we'll survive. We have to. The two men stood in silence for a moment, the weight of their situation pressing down on them like a physical force. Dimitro's thoughts drifted to his family once more, and he silently prayed that they were safe, that they were far from the horrors of the war that had consumed his life. The night was still. The only sounds the distant rumble of artillery fire and the occasional murmur of voices from the other soldiers. Dimitro knew that the coming hours would be critical, that they would be tested in ways they had never imagined. But he also knew that he had to keep fighting, not just for himself, but for his family, for the future they all deserved. As the night wore on, the first signs of the enemy's approach became evident. The distant thud of boots, the low hum of vehicles moving closer. Dimitro's grip tightened on his rifle, his heart pounding in his chest as he prepared for the inevitable clash. When the enemy finally appeared on the horizon, a dark, shifting mass against the night sky, Dimitro felt a surge of fear, quickly followed by a steely resolve. He would fight with everything he had, because surrender was not an option. The battle that followed was fierce and brutal. The enemy forces crashed against their defences like a relentless tide, and Dimitro found himself in the thick of the fighting, his rifle blazing as he fought to hold the line. Chapter 8 The Journey Home The cold air bit at Irina's cheeks as she and her children stepped off the overcrowded bus onto the snow-dusted ground of a small Polish town. It had been weeks since they had crossed the border. Weeks of navigating through bureaucratic red tape, sleeping in makeshift shelters, and surviving on handouts from kind strangers. Poland had offered them safety, but it still didn't feel like home. Every day, Irina felt the ache of Dimitro's absence, a constant reminder of the life they had left behind. The Polish family who had taken them in was kind, offering them a small room in their home and helping Irina find work as a teacher's assistant at the local school. The children had started attending classes, their laughter gradually returning as they adapted to the new routine. But even as they began to build a new life, the uncertainty of the war weighed heavily on Irina's heart. Every evening, she would sit by the small window in their room, staring out at the darkening sky, wondering where Dimitra was, if he was still alive, if he was thinking of them. She had sent letters through aid organizations, hoping they would somehow reach him. But the lack of any response gnawed at her. The war continued to rage back in Ukraine, and with every passing day, the possibility of a reunion felt more distant, more improbable. But then, one evening, something changed. Irina was preparing dinner with the Polish family's mother, Marta, when the phone in the kitchen rang. Marta answered it, her expression shifting from calm to surprise as she listened to the person on the other end. She glanced at Irina her eyes wide with a mix of disbelief and joy. Irina, 
Marta said, holding out the phone. It's for you. It's someone from the Red Cross. Irina's heart leapt into her throat as she took the phone, her hands trembling. Hello, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. Mrs. Coolish, the voice on the other end asked, and Irina could hear the sounds of a busy office in the background. This is Anna from the Red Cross. I have news about your husband. Irina's knees nearly buckled, and she gripped the edge of the counter for support. Dimitro? She breathed, her heart pounding so loudly in her ears that she could barely hear anything else. Yes, Anna said, her voice gentle. We've located him. He's alive, and he's on his way to Poland. He was injured, but he's been recovering in a military hospital. He's being transferred to a facility near your town, where he'll continue his recovery. Tears welled up in Irina's eyes, and she covered her mouth with her hand, unable to speak. Dimitra was alive. After all the fear, all the uncertainty, he was alive and coming to them. When will he arrive? Irina finally managed to ask, her voice shaking. In a few days. Anna replied. We'll keep you updated on his progress. He's been asking about you and the children, so we're sure he's eager to see you. Irina's heart swelled with emotion, a mixture of relief, joy, and disbelief. Thank you, she whispered, tears streaming down her face. Thank you so much. After the call ended, Irina sank into a chair her hand still trembling as she processed the news. Marta placed a comforting hand on her shoulder, her eyes shining with understanding. He's coming home, she said softly, her voice filled with warmth. You'll be together again. Irina nodded, wiping away her tears. Yes, she whispered, her voice filled with a sense of hope she hadn't felt in so long. We'll be together again. The next few days passed in a blur of anticipation and preparation. Irina told Sophia and Bodan the news, and the children's reactions were a mix of joy and disbelief. Bodan, still too young to fully understand the gravity of the situation, simply asked when Papa would be home, to tuck him in at night again. Sophia, on the other hand, clung to Irina, her eyes filled with tears of relief as she whispered, I knew he'd come back to us, Mama. I knew it. On the day of Dimitra's arrival, Irina could barely contain her emotions. She had dressed the children in their best clothes, and she herself had put on the only dress she had brought with her from Ukraine one that Dimitro had always said made her look beautiful. The hours ticked by slowly, each minute stretching out as if time itself was holding its breath. Finally, the time came to go to the hospital. Marta drove them in her car. The ride filled with a tense silence as they made their way through the snow-covered streets. Irina's heart pounded in her chest as they approached the hospital, her mind racing with a thousand thoughts. What would Dimitro look like? How badly had he been injured? Would he be the same man who had kissed her goodbye on that fateful morning? When they arrived, they were greeted by a Red Cross worker who led them through the maze of hallways to a quiet room at the end of a corridor. The door was slightly ajar, and Irina could see the soft light spilling out into the hallway. She took a deep breath, her hand tightening around Sophia's, and pushed the door open. Dimitra was sitting up in bed, his face pale and thin, but unmistakably alive. His eyes were closed, his head resting against the pillow, and for a moment Irina was afraid to speak afraid that if she did, this would all turn out to be a dream. But then Dimitro's eyes opened, 
and he looked at her, really looked at her, and the faintest of smiles tugged at the corners of his mouth. Irina, he whispered, his voice hoarse, but filled with so much emotion that it brought fresh tears to her eyes. Dimitro, Irina breathed, rushing to his side, her hands trembling as she reached out to touch his face. She felt the roughness of his stubble, the warmth of his skin, and the reality of it all hit her like a wave. He was here. He was really here. Dimitro's hand closed over hers, his grip weak but sure, and for a moment they just stared at each other, lost in the overwhelming emotion of the reunion they had both longed for. Mama, is that really Papa? Baudin's small voice broke the silence, filled with a mix of wonder and uncertainty. Irina turned, beckoning the children closer. Yes, my love, she said her voice trembling with emotion. It's Papa. He's come back to us. Sophia and Bowden approached the bed cautiously, as if they were afraid to break the fragile moment. Dimitro's eyes filled with tears as he looked at his children, his heart swelling with pride and love. Come here, he whispered, holding out his arms. Sophia was the first to move, rushing forward, and throwing her arms around Dimitro's neck, her tears soaking into his hospital gown. Papa, she sobbed, her voice muffled against his chest. I missed you so much. Dimitro held her tightly, his own tears falling freely now. I missed you too, my little sunflower, he whispered, pressing a kiss to the top of her head. I missed you so much. Bodan hesitated for only a moment before climbing onto the bed, nestling into the crook of Dimitro's arm. Papa, he said softly, his small hand clutching Dimitro's sleeve. You came back. Dimitro smiled through his tears, his heart overflowing with love. I promised I would, didn't I? He said, his voice thick with emotion. I promised I'd find you. Irina watched the scene unfold, her heart so full it felt like it might burst. The war had taken so much from them, had threatened to tear them apart, but here they were, together again. It was a miracle she had hardly dared to hope for, and now that it was here she could hardly believe it. Dimitro's gaze shifted to her, and he reached out with his free hand his fingers brushing against hers. Irina, he whispered, his voice filled with a mixture of love and sorrow. I'm so sorry. I never wanted to leave you. Irina shook her head, tears streaming down her face as she knelt beside the bed, pressing his hand to her lips. Don't be sorry, she whispered, her voice choked with emotion. You're here now. That's all that matters. They stayed like that for a long time, wrapped in each other's presence, the weight of the past few months lifting from their shoulders. The world outside the hospital room was still filled with uncertainty, with the horrors of war that had yet to end. But in this moment, they were together, and that was enough. As the evening wore on, the children eventually fell asleep, their small bodies curled up on the bed beside Dimitro. Irina sat in the chair beside them, her hands still holding Dimitro's, her heart at peace for the first time in what felt like forever. Dimitro looked at her, his eyes filled with a mixture of exhaustion and relief. We made it, Irina, he whispered, his voice barely audible. We're going. Chapter 9 A Painful Reunion The days that followed Dimitro's return were a blur of emotion, a whirlwind of joy tempered by the harsh realities of war. The reunion had been everything Irina had dreamed of, but as the initial euphoria faded, the full weight of what they had endured began to settle over the Coolish family. 
Dmitro's injuries, though not life-threatening, were severe. His body bore the scars of battle, deep cuts, shrapnel wounds, and a bullet that had grazed his side, narrowly missing vital organs. The doctors at the military hospital were cautiously optimistic about his recovery, but they were clear. It would take time, and the road ahead would be difficult. Irina spent every moment she could by Dimitro's side, helping him through the pain, the physical therapy, and the long quiet hours when the weight of his experiences pressed down on him like a heavy shroud. She saw the haunted look in his eyes, the way his hands sometimes trembled when he thought no one was watching. He had survived the war, but the war had left its mark on him, just as it had on her. Sophia and Bodan, too, struggled with the new reality. They had been through so much, fleeing their home, enduring the long, terrifying journey to Poland, and now seeing their father in a hospital bed, weak and vulnerable in a way they had never known him to be. The joy of having him back was tempered by the fear that he might never be the same. One evening, a few days after Dimitro's arrival, Irina found herself sitting alone in the small waiting room of the hospital, her head in her hands. She was exhausted, physically, emotionally, mentally. The strength that had carried her through the past few months was beginning to falter, and she wasn't sure how much longer she could hold on. The sound of the door opening startled her, and she looked up to see Marta, the kind Polish woman who had taken them in, standing in the doorway. Marta's expression was one of gentle concern, and she crossed the room to sit beside Irina, placing a comforting hand on her shoulder. Irina, Marta said softly, her voice filled with warmth. You've been so strong for so long. It's okay to let yourself feel this. It's okay to cry. Irina shook her head, her throat tightening with the effort to hold back the tears. I can't, she whispered, her voice breaking. If I start crying, I don't know if I'll be able to stop. Marta pulled Irina into a gentle embrace, her arms offering the comfort that Irina hadn't realized she so desperately needed. You're not alone, Marta said, her voice soothing. You have people who care about you, who will help you through this. You don't have to carry it all by yourself. The tears came then, hot and unstoppable, as Irina buried her face in Marta's shoulder. Months of fear, pain and uncertainty poured out of her in a torrent of sobs, and she let herself grieve for everything they had lost, for the family she had been so afraid she would never see again, and for the husband who had come back to her so broken. Marta held her through it all, whispering words of comfort in Polish and Ukrainian, until the storm of tears finally began to subside. Irina pulled back, wiping her eyes with the back of her hand, her breath coming in shuddering gasps. Thank you, Irina whispered, her voice hoarse. I didn't realize how much I needed that. Marta smiled, her eyes filled with understanding. You're stronger than you know, she said gently. But even the strongest people need to let go sometimes. You're going to get through this, Irina. You and Dimitro, and the children. You're going to get through it together. Irina nodded, taking a deep breath as she tried to steady herself. She knew Marta was right. They had come so far, and they had survived so much. But the journey wasn't over yet. Later that night, after the children had fallen asleep in the small room the hospital had provided for them. Irina sat by Dimitro's bed, her hand resting gently on his. The soft beeping of the machines was the only sound in the room, a constant reminder of the fragility of the moment. 
Dimitro stirred, his eyes fluttering open. He looked at Irina, a tired but genuine smile crossing his face. You should be resting, he whispered, his voice weak but warm. I couldn't sleep, Irina replied, her fingers gently tracing the lines of his hand. I just wanted to be with you. Dimitro sighed, his eyes darkening with a mix of sorrow and guilt. I'm sorry, Irina, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. I'm sorry for everything you had to go through because of me. I never wanted this for you, for the children. Irina shook her head, her heart aching at the pain in his voice. Don't, she whispered fiercely. Don't apologize. You did what you had to do. You fought for us, for our country. I'm proud of you, Dimitro. I'm just so grateful that you're here, that you came back to us. Tears welled up in Dimitro's eyes and he reached out, his fingers brushing against her cheek. I don't know how I would have survived without knowing you were waiting for me, he said, his voice thick with emotion. You and the children, you kept me going. I'm so sorry that I wasn't there to protect you. You were with us in every way that mattered, Irina replied, her voice trembling. Your strength, your love, it carried us through. And now we're here, together. That's what matters. Dimitro nodded, his eyes shining with unshed tears. I love you, Irina, he whispered, his voice full of the depth of his emotion. I'll always love you. Irina leaned in, pressing her forehead against his, her heart overflowing with love and relief. I love you too, she whispered. So much. They stayed like that for a long time, their foreheads touching. Their hands clasped together, finding solace in each other's presence. The world outside the hospital room was still filled with uncertainty, the war still raging on. But in this moment, they had found a small island of peace in the storm. The days that followed were filled with small steps forward. Dimitro's recovery was slow, but every day brought a little more strength, a little more hope. Irina and the children visited him every day, their presence a balm for his weary soul. Sophia brought him books to read carefully chosen from the small library at her school, and Bodan proudly showed off the drawings he made, each one filled with bright colours and hopeful images of their future. The children's laughter, their innocent joy slowly began to lift the shadows that had settled over Dimitro's heart. One afternoon, as Irina sat beside Dimitro's bed, helping him with his physical therapy exercises, he looked at her with a thoughtful expression. What happens next, Irina? He asked quietly. When I'm out of here, what do we do? Irina paused, her hand resting on his arm as she met his gaze. The question was one she had been avoiding, not wanting to face the reality of the choices that lay ahead. But she knew they couldn't ignore it forever. I don't know she admitted, her voice soft. The war, it's still going on. Going back to Ukraine might not be safe, but staying here in Poland, it doesn't feel like home. Dimitro nodded, understanding the conflict in her words. I miss our home. I miss Marinka, he said quietly. But I don't want to put you or the children in danger. Maybe we can stay here for a while longer, until things are more stable. Irina nodded, her heart heavy with the weight of the uncertainty. We'll figure it out, she said, trying to sound more confident than she felt. We'll take it one day at a time. The most important thing is that we're together. Dmitro squeezed her hand, his eyes filled with gratitude. Thank you, Irina, he whispered. For everything for being so strong, for keeping our family safe. I don't know what I would have done without you. 
Irina smiled, her eyes shining with unshed tears. We're a team, she said softly. We always have been, and we always will be. The path ahead was still uncertain, filled with challenges and decisions they had yet to make. But as they faced it together, hand in hand, Irina felt a sense of hope she hadn't known in a long time. They had survived the worst of the storm, and now they could begin to rebuild their lives. Whatever the future held, they would face it together as a family. And that, Irina knew, was enough. Chapter 10 A New Home The first light of dawn crept over the horizon, casting a soft, golden hue over Krakow. The city was still asleep, the streets quiet, and the sky tinged with the promise of a new day. Inside the coolish family's apartment, the gentle sound of breathing filled the small bedroom as Irina stirred, waking to the familiar warmth of Dimitro's presence beside her. She lay there for a moment, savouring the peace of the morning, the quiet intimacy of their shared space. These small moments, waking up to find Dimitra beside her, hearing the children's laughter echoing down the hallway, reminded her how far they had come. They had weathered the storm, and though the scars remained, they had found a way to move forward, together. Irina carefully slipped out of bed, trying not to wake Dimitro. He needed his rest, still recovering from the injuries that had nearly taken him from her. She paused for a moment, watching him sleep, his features softened by the early morning light. The lines of worry and pain that had etched themselves into his face were still there, but they were fading, slowly but surely. She made her way to the kitchen, where she began to prepare breakfast. The smell of coffee and freshly baked bread soon filled the air, a comforting scent that made the apartment feel like home. It was a simple routine, one that Irina had come to cherish in the months since their reunion. The small, everyday rituals of life had taken on a new significance, a reminder of the stability they had fought so hard to regain. As she set the table, she heard the soft padding of footsteps behind her. Turning, she saw Sophia standing in the doorway, rubbing the sleep from her eyes. Good morning, Mama, Sophia murmured, her voice still thick with sleep. Good morning, my love, Irina replied with a smile, opening her arms for Sophia to step into. She wrapped her daughter in a warm embrace, feeling the steady heartbeat beneath Sophia's soft pajamas. Did you sleep well? Sophia nodded, resting her head against Irina's shoulder. I had a dream about home, she whispered, her voice barely audible. About the way things used to be, before everything happened. Irina's heart tightened at her daughter's words, but she kept her voice gentle. What was it like? she asked softly, stroking Sophia's hair. It was nice, Sophia said, her voice growing steadier. We were all together, you, Papa, Bodan, and me. We were in our old house and everything was just like it was before. Irina pressed a kiss to the top of Sophia's head, holding her close. I know you miss our old life, she said, her voice tender. I miss it too, but we have each other, and we're building something new here. It's not the same, but it's still special, because we're together. Sophia pulled back slightly to look up at her mother, her green eyes thoughtful. Do you think we'll ever go back, Mama? To Marienka? The question hung in the air, heavy with the weight of all that had happened. Irina had asked herself the same question countless times, and each time the answer seemed just out of reach. The war was still ongoing, the outcome uncertain, 
and the thought of returning to a country still torn apart by conflict filled her with both longing and fear. I don't know, Sophia, Irina admitted, her voice soft with the sadness she had kept hidden for so long. I hope so one day, but for now we need to focus on where we are and on making the best life we can here. Sophia nodded slowly, her expression serious beyond her years. I understand, she said quietly. I just, I want us to be happy again, Mama, like we were before. Irina's heart ached at the innocence of her daughter's wish, and she cupped Sophia's face in her hands. Her voice filled with love. We will be happy, Sophia. We already are, in many ways. It's just a different kind of happiness now. But that doesn't mean it's any less real. Sophia smiled faintly, nodding as she leaned into her mother's touch. Okay, Mama, she whispered. I'll try to be happy too. As they finished their conversation, the sound of Bodan's footsteps echoed down the hallway. The little boy appeared in the kitchen doorway, his hair a mess of curls, still half asleep but with a bright smile on his face. Good morning, Mama. Good morning, Sophia, he chirped, his energy already bubbling over. Irina laughed, her heart lightened by the sight of her son's unshakable joy. Good morning, Bodan, she replied, bending down to scoop him up into her arms. Are you ready for breakfast? Bodan nodded enthusiastically, his arms wrapping around Irina's nemek. I'm so hungry, Mama, he exclaimed. Can we have pancakes today? I think we can manage that, Irina said with a grin, setting Bodan down so he could help her get the ingredients ready. The kitchen soon filled with the sound of laughter and the sizzle of batter on the griddle as the three of them worked together. The simple joy of the moment, easing the lingering shadows of the past. A short while later, Dimitro joined them in the kitchen, drawn by the smell of pancakes and the sound of his family's laughter. He looked stronger than he had in weeks though the cane he used to steady himself was a reminder of the challenges that still lay ahead. Good morning, Dimitro greeted them with a smile, his heart swelling with pride at the sight of his family. He leaned down to kiss Irina, then ruffled Bodan's hair, making the boy giggle. I see you've all been busy this morning. We're making pancakes! Bodan announced proudly, holding up the spatula he had been using to flip them. Look, Papa, I'm helping. You're doing a great job, Dimitro said, his smile widening as he watched his son's enthusiasm. He turned to Irina, his voice softening as he took her hand. Can we talk for a moment? He asked quietly, his tone serious. Irina nodded, sensing the gravity in his voice. Of course, she said, leading him to the small balcony that overlooked the quiet street below. The morning air was crisp, and she pulled her sweater tighter around her as they stepped outside. Dimitro leaned against the railing, his eyes distant as he gazed out over the rooftops of the city. For a moment, he didn't speak, and Irina waited, knowing he was gathering his thoughts. Irina, he began, his voice low and filled with sorrow. There's something I need to tell you, something I've been avoiding because, because I didn't want to face it myself. Irina's heart tightened with worry, and she reached out to place a hand on his arm. What is it? she asked softly, her voice filled with concern. Dmitro took a deep breath his gaze meeting hers, and she saw the pain in his eyes, the deep, aching sadness that had been building since his return. We won't be going back to Marienka, he said quietly, 
his voice heavy with the weight of the truth. There's nothing to go back to. Irina's breath caught in her throat, her heart clenching as the meaning of his words sank in. What do you mean? She whispered, though deep down she already knew. Dimitro looked away, his jaw tightening as he struggled to keep his voice steady. Marienka is gone, Irina. The city. It's been destroyed. There's nothing left but ruins. Our home. The streets we knew. The places we loved. They're all gone. The words hit Irina like a physical blow, and she felt her knees weaken as the full impact of what he was saying settled over her. Marienka? The town where they had built their life together, where they had raised their children, was no more. The home they had longed to return to had been wiped off the map, leaving nothing but memories. Tears welled up in Irina's eyes, and she clutched the railing for support, her breath coming in ragged gasps. No, she whispered, shaking her head in disbelief. It can't be true. It can't be gone. Dmitru reached out, pulling her into his arms, his own tears mingling with hers as they held each other tightly. I'm so sorry, he whispered, his voice breaking with grief. I'm so sorry, Irina. I wanted to protect our home, but there was nothing I could do. The war took everything. They stood there on the balcony, holding each other as the reality of their loss washed over them. They mourned not just the destruction of their home, but the loss of a part of themselves, of the life they had known and loved, the dreams they had held onto, the hope of returning to Marienka had been shattered, leaving a void that seemed impossible to fill. For a long time, they simply held each other, letting the tears flow, sharing the pain that had been too great to face alone. The world around them seemed to fade away, leaving only the two of them, united in their grief. But as the tears began to subside, Irina felt something else stirring within her. A determination, a resolve that had been forged in the crucible of their shared suffering. She pulled back slightly, looking up at Dimitro. Her eyes still red from crying but filled with a quiet strength. We may have lost Marienka, she said softly, her voice trembling but steady. But we haven't lost each other. We haven't lost our family. Wherever we go, whatever we do, we'll make a new home. It won't be the same, but it will be ours. And as long as we're together, we can face anything. Dimitro looked at her his heart swelling with love and pride for the woman who had been his anchor through it all. He cupped her face in his hands, his voice filled with emotion. You're right, Irina. We've been through so much, but we're still here, still standing, and together we'll build something new. We'll make a home wherever we go. Irina nodded a tearful smile breaking through the sadness. We will, she whispered, her voice filled with a fierce determination. We'll create a new life, a new beginning, for us, for Sophia, for Bodan. We'll honour what we've lost by building something beautiful, something that can never be taken from us. They stood together on the balcony, watching as the sun continued to rise casting its golden light over the city. The future was uncertain, and the pain of their loss would never fully fade, but they knew that they could face whatever came next, as long as they had each other. As they rejoined their children in the kitchen, the smell of pancakes and the sound of laughter filled the air, a reminder that life continued even in the face of loss. The Coolish family had been through the worst, but they had emerged stronger, more united than ever. Marienka was gone, 
But their love, their bond, was unbreakable. And in that love, they would find the strength to build a new home, a new life, wherever the road might lead them. As they sat down together at the table, Dimitro looked around at his family, his heart filled with gratitude for the life they were building. We may not have our old home, he said quietly, his voice filled with emotion. But this, right here, this is home. And as long as we're together, nothing can take that away from us. Irina smiled, her hand resting on his as they all sat down to eat. Home is where we are, she said softly. And wherever we go, we'll carry it with us in our hearts. Together they faced the new day, ready to build a future that honored the past, but looked forward with hope. The war had taken much, but it had not taken their spirit, their love, or their determination to create a new life. And in that, they had found their true home, one that could never be destroyed.